go live and go ahead and make sure we've got all of these different areas connected. <laughs> we've got YouTube live and we've got Facebook live. And so if you are seeing me, hearing me, seeing us, hearing us, then please type in and let us know. Uh, type into the Crowdcast platform. If you're on Crowdcast, if you're watching through Facebook, go ahead and type in on Facebook. And Trevor's blurry. Trevor is a little bit blurry. Yeah. He's a little... It might be a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. Hey, Trevor. Hey. Hey. Yeah, that's a little bit... I mean... It's a little bit blurry, but not too bad. So he's coming back. Sandra said all good. That's good. All right. So um, hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's association chat. Uh, <laughs> Layla says over on Crowdcast, she says, Trevor's a little bit blurry, or maybe I need to up my IQ. Ha, ha, ha. So yes. Uh, and Anne's here. Hi, Anne. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. What a crazy, crazy world we're living in, in the association chat land. Am I right? Past few weeks have been absolutely insane. And this week, I have a very uh, special guest, and I have a very special topic for you guys, because um, we're talking about Geek Chic and innovation in the association for high IQs. So if this is your first time ever tuning in to this crazy thing we call Association Chat, welcome to Association Chat. This is your weekly online discussion for the association community where we warm ourselves by the virtual fire with topics of the day, welcoming thought leaders and trailblazers alike to join up in this online home for the community. I'm the host of Association Chat, Kiki Letalian, and on today's show, we're going to engage the brain and talk high intelligence with Trevor Mitchell. He's the executive director, CEO of American Mensa and the Mensa Foundation. And Trevor provides leadership toward the achievement of the American Mensa's vision, mission, vision, mission, vision, strategy, and annual goals and objectives. He does a whole lot more than that, but rather than read his bio, I figured we could actually talk to him because today we're living in an age when we see uh, things like the Big Bang Theory um, taking off. Everybody's excited about uh, house and scorpion and geek culture is alive and well. And then at the same time, while we're sending off our, our kids, our toddlers to go learn how to code, then uh, we're looking at people like Bill Gates as being the rock stars of our day. So when we live in a society that is showing us that having a high IQ is and being a geek, so to speak, is not necessarily a negative thing. What does that mean when you are the executive director and CEO of American Mensa? So uh, I want to welcome you to the show today, Trevor, to talk to us about all of this and more. Well, thanks. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I wanted to go ahead and get started uh, right off the top with some exciting uh, news about the apparel that you're wearing. There's something <laughs> going on. What is this going on here? Can so you first off, this is kind of our new uh, branding logo that we're using. It's called our Geek Guy. Your Geek Guy. Um, nice. We have him. We also have a plethora of geek icons from construction workers to police officers to princesses to oh i love it uh, to, to it all it, it actually started what was really interesting uh we had one of our members who was in a miss idaho pageant and asked if we would be willing to uh take our geek guy and put a tiara on her for to support her we said absolutely and it just got us thinking every mensen is represented in in so many facets of industries that are out there and occupations that why do we have to put it to one geek guy you now? So yeah, that was, that was our thought. We're like, let's just take this and run with it and um, have been, it wasn't a Nash, it's essentially a new branding uh, platform or project, but we took it and ran with it. It has become part of who we are as we really promote our organization and the, value and importance on high intelligence in our society, whether you belong um, to Mensa or not, that 
you know, being intelligent isn't something to, uh, you know, hide in the shadows about. It's not something that you just want to put down. It's something to be celebrated. It's something to encourage. It's something to engage. And so we're, we're taking all of these opportunities and growing it. And what better way to do it with a little of apparel where people are proud to show their geek pride. I mean, absolutely. And I just want to um, make a mention that over here in the chat box, Layla said, can I just say how awesome it is that geeks are cool now? And I mean, it's so true. Like, do you yes. remember, you know, growing up? I, I remember at the time, you know, that especially if you were like a little girl, you were supposed to be nice and you were not maybe supposed to show how smart you are because, you know, if you want the boys to like you or something like that. And it, it's just pretty much all of that is it has been, I feel, thrown away. Like like we've we're moving past that as a society, and I love 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 it. But that's that's actually kind of um, that's a big responsibility on your shoulders because now I feel that not just uh, society is looking to Mensa and saying. Who are you guys again? And and now that you you are like responsible for this group of people who have high intelligence, what are you doing? And uh, and then to the Mensons, they have to be looking and saying, okay, mm -hmm. okay, guys, you know, lead the way. And so, how do you do that? How do you even start approaching that? So uh, it's it's a it's a struggle for sure because there's there's one concept around accepting geek culture and being popular. And there's another of even owning it. Um, one of the things that we struggle with within our current membership is, you know, how many of them uh, have actually shared with other family members or their friends that they're a member of Mensa. <laughs> and so it, some of it is, is a grassroots campaign just internally saying it's okay, you know, it, it to show your, show how proud you are. Um, one of the things we just did uh, starting yesterday. So October is uh, membership Recognition Month. It's whenever Mensa as an organization was founded. So we celebrate membership. We It's a big uh, push for us to grow uh, membership in it. And for the first time uh, in a long time, we put a really consorted effort into our social media uh, efforts and really had people like, show your pride, show, show what's happening with Mensa. And it was so awesome to see for the first time in a while, people sharing all this on their social channels, talking about how proud they are to be a member of the organization. And so, you know, that's a first little step, but it, it is a big responsibility, but I also think it's our responsibility as an organization to dispel any myths that are out there about high intelligence or about the organization. Uh, it's our responsibility to represent our members and uh, look to what we can do to better them. And we are at the crossroads where, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of things happening in pop culture mm -hmm. that are making mainstream intelligence geek, um, being odd and different is okay and cool, that we can actually capitalize on that and bring that human interest um, and human connection about who high intelligence individuals are and how they're, they're everyone else, they just, their brains process information differently. And we, we can show you how and how you are just like everyone else. Um, so it's a big responsibility, but it is so exceedingly awesome to be a part of this right at this moment that I ignore or either ignore or just forget that it's a responsibility and just I'm like, this is so awesome and cool. How do we do this more? How do we move this further? How do I help make a better difference for my organization and my members uh, at this important juncture? And we just have fun with it. And the more we're having fun with it, the more positive reception we're getting right now. And so it's, it's, being aware of that responsibility, but realizing we we just can and just do and go and uh, it just in in the it's um, ten months now that I've been the executive director and just having a a blast with it because there's so many opportunities out there that we have just begun to explore and so many more we want to explore that it's just it's a lot of. A lot of great things happening. So, so I love that. Okay. I love that because obviously you're very excited. You do have so much responsibility on your shoulders, but what I love is this, this, um, embrace you're embracing the fun. You're embracing the mm -hmm. stuff that, that I think people respond to as humans. They're fascinated. They, they want to 
love what you're doing too. And, right. and so there are a lot of different things that you've been doing that I'm really excited to talk about. One of the reasons you guys that I thought was really important that Trevor should come on is because as associations are looking at uh, their business model at looking at um, things like, you know, what do you do with products and what do you do with your events and what do you do with and and um, American Mensa has some incredible things that they're working on right now. And I want to get to that. But can we just talk about the fact that since you have taken this role that you yourself have had some pretty incredible experiences. Am I right? And I'm, I think, you know what I'm talking about. Um, could you share with me maybe one of the, the benefits or perks of being in this position since you, since you took it? Um, let's see, there have been uh, a lot of, a lot of perks that, um, that have come up that I, I, I wasn't expecting. Uh, I know a couple of them we'll get to probably here in a minute whenever we talk about some of the innovative things that we've done. Oh, put me on the spot. I, I was kind of using that to drag out to figure out like, what, what am I gonna talk about here? Uh, <laughs> the, the one that I think is for me, the, the coolest thing, it was a bucket list for me to just attend. Um, I never, in my wildest dreams thought I would get to be on a panel at San Diego Comic-Con, the largest Comic-Con uh, <laughs> that is out there. I, I've been to many of the regional ones um, just as a person, like uh, my own interests, uh, it's some of the things I'm interested in, I, I have yeah. been, but um, that was one of our, our opportunities. We were talking about how do we connect with uh, the culture that is out there that many of our members feel connected to and where a lot of them kind of got their start and be, were able to find and start developing their own communities before they found Mensa. And for years we talked about like, oh, we should go exhibit, but it wasn't, after being there, that was not the case. Like we would never do really well as an exhibitor at Comic-Con, but we thought, well, what about doing a panel conversation? And kind of to the topic of today's uh, association chat, we talked about why is Geek the New Cool? How's pop culture influencing it? Mm -hmm. And the fact that I got to sit on a stage at San Diego Comic-Con and talk with other panelists who represented DC Comics, uh, one of them who is a member of our organization uh, is also an actor. Uh, his name is Leif Ganfort. Uh, if you ever IMDB him, he is most known for, actually right now he's on General Hospital, but he's most known for uh, in the Tobey Maguire Superman movies as the guy who killed Uncle Ben. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we had him engaged um, and we had a, a social blogger within that sphere. Like we, we, all it was was just this deep conversation about how that community is, needs to continue to embrace itself and further and in, in, uh, really grow. And I, I remember sitting there going, Oh my God, someone please pinch me. This isn't happening. <laughs> you know, I, I, it was so cool, but it was just another thing for us of, you know, I never figured I would get to do any of that. I never figured I'd get to go to Comic-Con because it is hard as ever loving being to get one. <laughs> I mean, there's an episode in Big Bang if, if you're, if you're uh, where they're all on their computers and they're like pushing refresh on their computer. Yeah. Uh, to try and get in and get tickets. And that's seriously what it's like. I, my president of my board talks about how there's eight of them when they have a Google spreadsheet and they're all doing that because they're around the country and they're typing in who got what. So they have a matrix of if so-and-so gets this, then this is how they do and get certain people. Oh my gosh. In. And there you are, you're marching through and you're like, hey, I'm on a panel. Yes. <laughs> um, so I, awesome. and I, and I'm just like in awe of all of it. I'm just taking it all in. And you know, I had the perfect guide. My president of my board has gone to Comic Con. I think she said thirty-five out of the original, out of the total forty years that it's been around. Wow! So I mean, I mean, it, it was like going to someone who goes to Disney World every year and knows all the ins and outs, fast pass. Like she knew how to get me everywhere, and I really got to experience. But I got to experience it through a member's eyes as well. Yeah. So that from perspectives, but that was like 
phenomenal. And I uh, wouldn't trade anything for that in the world. I love it. Well, it is definitely something that probably helps you like whenever you have those days where you're like, oh my God, how am I going to, how am I going to make all this stuff happen? Because, you know, I, I didn't read your entire bio uh, as we went into this, but you guys, if you, if you want to take a uh, five minutes and like read through Trevor has <laughs> Trevor not only has a, a lot of things that he's done in the past and that he's involved in, but my God, your day to day has to be just insane. And so while you have these day to day responsibilities, you're leading this organization forward and you're you're still doing some amazing new things. Mm -hmm. You're forging new territory. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about um, some of these new things that you're experiencing that I think, um, you know, might might in at least inspire or motivate some of the rest of us with what we can do with our organizations? Sure. Uh, so for us, one of the biggest challenges we face that other associations aren't in a, a similar position is how we go about getting non dues revenue sponsorships, um, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Being a, a member organization whose membership is 55,000 individuals, we're 2% of um, representative of those who take intelligence tests. Um, my youngest member is three, my oldest is 109. Wow. I have people <laughs> in all the So of course, one of the things when you're talking to people who possibly sponsor you know, an event or, or um, our website, you know, the traditional uh, avenues, they want to know what their ROI is, what, who, who they're going to connect with, who the decision makers. We don't have that luxury. Um, and I'm not saying that other associations have a luxury. They just actually have a, a more direct pool that, than what we do to have to uh, uh, connect with. So for us, it is this whole idea of, well, how do we bring in other non dues revenue other than, uh, other than uh, meetings and meeting income? And so for us, we are very, very uh, fortunate to have a strong brand image. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes our brand image is bigger than our membership itself. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the things I've done is I really, I, I saw the opportunity as we were talking amongst the staff when I uh, came into this position and we we're like, why don't we really focus on that a little bit more? Let's, let's see what we can do. And so we, we move some things around. So I have a branding team that focuses solely on branding and licensing of our brand. They focus on that business to business aspect of it. Uh, and a lot of the times that isn't impacting or doing anything that's a direct benefit to our membership, but it, it's putting our name, our, our um, giving somewhat of our endorsement to some of the things out there. Um, and we're very, very, very selective on, on what we do. Uh, one of them we did about a year ago was uh, a connection with Hasbro Gaming uh, mm -hmm. and you know, they're famous for Monopoly. That That's where they got their start. They, you know, they have a huge gaming. They do Nerf. They do My Little Pony, Preschool. Like They do all these kinds of uh, elements that are out there in today's consumer society. Well, one of the things they were wanting to do is re-release four popular games. Um, back, Kiki, when you and I were, were younger, um, that we kind of grew up with. And But what they wanted was... They wanted a different spin on it. They wanted to focus on how do we promote these games as not only fun and interactive and family friendly, but also have learning capabilities with them, mm -hmm. learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so what they did is they worked with us. And well, first they said, we want the Mensa brand. We're like, okay. So we started talking with them about it. But we're like, you know what? We have another sub brand that we want to focus on. We're using our Mensa for Kids brand, which is more on education and how do we help students embrace learning, um, whether they become members or not. It's not about making you high intelligence, high IQ. It's all about how do we help you understand learning. And so um, we developed 32 learning elements. And then when these games came out, each of them has on there um, three different elements you can learn by playing this game. Uh, and the games they re-released were Mousetrap, uh, oh, I love that. I What a great yeah. idea. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Mousetrap, perfection, yeah. uh, downspin, and sculpted cranium. So it's just the, the putty part of it. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, we're like, oh, this is just a, you know, let's see what happens, where this goes. It was, it was actually an international deal. 
Uh, and fortunately for us, we met our revenue goal within the first two quarters. Wow. Yeah. Um, at this point, we, we kind of should have learned better. And um, they had put a cap on what we could earn in a fiscal year, but we keep earning. Um, so we're renegotiating some of that now <laughs> as it's been successful. But now we are looking at how do we move into other games? And there's some games they brought to us. We're going, uh, this one doesn't make as much sense. It's like ants in the pants. We're like, eh, yeah, yeah. It, you, you probably could do that, but it, it's, it was like, they wanted to use our name, our brand um, to give uh, a little bit of uh, background, a little bit of emphasis on, on that learning piece. And because of it, they started putting, uh, working with teachers in schools, uh, putting this into the classroom as uh, educational learning tools for children. So we started working with, at that point, um, bloggers, stay at home, uh, homeschool bloggers, mommy bloggers, teacher bloggers, start working with educational organizations such as the National Association of Gifted Children. Um, how do you know, how do you take these opportunities and then push them through? And it great created a great revenue stream for us that we hadn't intended, but then it also then created a huge awareness in target markets that also have influence over membership that we hadn't even expected. And so yeah. we're seeing that starting to um, go on the rise a little bit. So that, like, that was our first foray, and now we're we're moving into a couple of new things. And I got I'll be a little careful about some of the things I say because uh, I'm I still know. under NDA on a couple of stuff. Um, but I can I can share some information. Um, one of the things we're looking at is uh, working with a company that does educational toys. Uh, mm-hmm. So separate of games with, of toys, um, and there's actually a new toy that is coming out this January from them um, that uh, the essence of it will help teach kids, um, well, anybody who uses it, but teach kids how to actually code um, through HTML and that kind of stuff. And the coding, the coding part of it, what's so cool is it actually creates an output. So you don't just do everything on your computer. Like There's a physical output that happens with that coding. Um, and so, you know, we're working through it. It's actually getting previewed this week in Dallas at uh, a toy preview week, um, but it will officially launch at the Com- uh, Consumer Expo show in J- uh, January of 19. Um, so, you know, we'll be promoting it as well. But I-, I saw I saw the prototype. I actually played with it a couple of weeks ago and it was all I could do not to take that thing home with me. It really? Was so- oh, yes. how awesome. Like, and I'm sitting there going, how cool is this? And in that conversation, we're also going back to how can we create lesson plans on this? Like, um, we're talking about at our conference, how do we take this and put it into a situation where our gifted youth and create challenges around? Like, how can you make this product do more than what it's intended to do? Uh, and it's it's absolutely amazing. And the, the coolest part to, to the entire story is in this company, uh, the creator, we, we gave everybody uh, access to our practice test. They all took it. Uh, she scored uh, fairly high, found her prior evidence score, and became a member. So the creator of this joint project that wow. we're working on is also a member. So now we get to tell another story that we didn't even know before. And she's all excited. And so it's it just continued to unravel various opportunities um, that we're looking at. And we're hoping that if this takes off, that we're going to work with a lot of their other current toy lines uh, because they have a lot in the the STEM and the STEAM area and how do we connect with them and then how do we then take that into maybe some partnering with other associations such as the engineering associations, the science, all those that really hit those STEAM areas. Um, maybe as a collaborative, just on an, as an education partner, maybe not so much as a, uh, a revenue stream for us, but creating opportunities to raise that awareness of education because there are two tenets in our mission. One is creating a community uh, for our members and the other is to promote social intellectual stimulation. And so this is getting us into that second part that we haven't uh, as an organization been as strong on. So we're, we're looking at so many, many things there. And Uh, and then, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to jump into the other one, but go ahead. Yeah. I, I was just going to make a note to say that, and Anne saying, this makes so much sense. How exciting. And at, at, is that what you guys are feeling right now? Because that's what I'm feeling too, is is as I hear Trevor talk about, um, it, you think 
God, it makes so much sense. Of course, this is obviously the type of work that they should be doing. All of this fits together and it sounds inspiring and it sounds, it, it, it starts to make you, I don't, I don't know about all of you, but it starts to make me feel like, how can I apply this in my own situation? What is it that I can bring that, that, you know, people can really benefit from and bring value to that maybe I haven't done before. And when you think about all the different associations that we have out there in all these different industries and how creating community or promoting in your case, promoting social uh, intellect intelligence. Um, but like, looking at how to disseminate that knowledge, which is on many people, like in many mission statements for associations, you know, what if we got really wildly creative and took a chance on even just one of these types of initiatives and just, then you're talking about partnerships with different organizations that could take it even further and you get this feeling of something really, really blooming and taking off and becoming something beautiful. So, okay. So anyway, I'm all into what you're saying. Please go into the, <laughs> please go into the next point that you're going to make. I'm so sorry I interrupted. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it's perfectly, I, I totally get it. I, I'm glad that at least to you, my, my enthusiasm, <laughs> out because it, it is so exciting. And for me, the, the biggest thing I would say to anybody is, Anytime an opportunity comes up, we focus on how do I, how do I make this happen mm -hmm. or how do we make this happen? So it's, it's always that how do, and there are times where we're going, eh, this is not a good idea, but there are many times we're going, there's something here. There's something we can look at. Let's explore it and, um, it, it and take that effort. And so, uh, kind of, so that's kind of how I say that's how we approach it. And there's nothing ever, uh, an immediate no, unless it's a lot of money we don't have. Um, <laughs> and that's like, <laughs> not now. <laughs> right, right. We right. all can read into that. But, you know, uh, but one of the things that kind of came into those how do I situations, excuse me, mm -hmm. is over the past few years, we get a lot of calls from uh, studios looking to cast um students, adults in, in various things. And they're looking to us because they're looking for a particular um, individual to, to, to represent uh, some kind of demographic, but they, they want the, the IQ piece there. We kept seeing it, we kept seeing it. And we actually tried uh, three years ago, uh, we worked with a uh, Fremantle company on a TV show that aired on Lifetime called uh, Child Genius. Hmm. And so, uh, we were there, we were a part of it. Uh, we had um, someone on our staff who specializes in gifted youth kind of talking about what's how a child's brain's processing some of the, these things. Um, it lasted two seasons. It was a great show, but it also focused more on the parents um, and their various parenting styles than it did on the children. And mm. we're like, this, this, it, it did okay, but it, it was, it was what it was. Um, most recently this year, there was a show, I think it was on NBC, um, that was Genius Junior, hosted by Neil Patrick Harris. We oh, helped yeah. in the casting. Yeah, we helped in the casting on it. And it, it was a very, it was a good show, but it definitely um, skewed more to the, the more uh, unique or various talents that uh, someone's high intelligence has. Like if one of the things I always remembered was they'd have them spell uh, doing a spelling word, but they'd have to spell it backwards. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, for, from, a, from an audience standpoint, that's very hard to relate. Yeah. And so we were talking with um, a, a production company uh, that we're familiar with and we work, have worked with in the past. And they said, you know, what if we, you know, sign an agreement, you know, and we'll look at possibly uh, developing a show, farming it out with your name, with your, with your things on, uh, with your, uh, approval and, and input on. We said, okay, sure. And so, um, that's what we did. It, it actually, uh, has gone through the process of show development. Uh, it's actually been farmed out to some of the networks. It has, uh, two week, two, three weeks ago. Um, I actually was in LA. We were filming a, um, what they call a sizzle roll. So kind of an idea of proof of concept 
um, with some of our members, some of the things. Um, I don't know, Hollywood, how I got you on this <laughs> show today, but yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. And, again, it was another one of those like pinch me where am I kind of moments. Yeah. But the thing is, is ten percent of shows actually get picked up. But there was something that the producers and everything saw, and our whole thing going into this was we want our members portrayed as humans who happen to be high, have high IQs. Mm -hmm. That was it. We want real stories. And they said, absolutely. And whenever we started talking through that, we got through all that. We're like, okay, this is a chance for us to tell our story, to humanize and dispel some of those myths about those with high IQs out there and connect them to the audience. And then, so now we're the, <laughs> Funniest thing I could say um, without disclosing too much, they were doing one of the puzzles. And what's really interesting is watching someone who is really good at those do them on paper as a test versus doing them in physical. Wow. Strengths. I mean, because I it, can't even think about I'm like already well, out. Forget it. It, it adds a different <laughs> dimension to it. And what happened was all six of our members we brought in to do it did the uh, – the the activity the same way but the thing was is the way they did it neither none of it wasn't one of the two answers that the producers had identified they, they didn't even know this answer existed wow so because, yeah because of the physicality it changed how they approached the project and the problem and so it was just phenomenal and yeah. you know i'm spending time with the producers the next day and we're talking about hey, this is, you know, they're like, we're so excited, you know, we're redoing some of this stuff, we're changing this around. Um, and so, you know, if nothing else, it gave us excitement, but it also was one of those, like, how can we, if, if this doesn't go forward, what can we learn from this? How can we right. take this and apply this in some of the other things we're trying to do? Um, so it was exciting. That's what I was thinking too, is that like, as I hear you, I, and I know when we were at ASE Annual and talking a little bit, I, I just was really inspired. We were walking from the opening reception to another reception. And uh, you were talking to me about some of the things that were going on. And I was just like, God, I, I couldn't help but immediately start thinking, you know, any like, what if, what if you just got brave and said, let's write down that idea. And why not? Why not look mm -hmm. into it? And I don't know that a lot of associations have looked into the concept of a uh, a TV show or anything like that. But what, what are some of those ways that you can get out there and really educate the public about what you're doing than something like that and get it and getting your members excited too. And so, you know, I, I, I have to say that it's an incredible opportunity um, for you in your position, but God, what a great opportunity for all of us to hear some of these experiences that you're going through, because I think what it does is once you see how another organization or hear how another organization has busted through one hurdle and just kept going and they're, they're like, they're clear in the next one, then it makes you, it, it reminds you that you have the same possibilities. You have the same mm -hmm. capabilities may be available to you. So I, I do want to ask a little bit more about that. I know you have other things that are probably going on too, and feel free to share those. But internally, how do you ensure that um, you keep the ideas coming? You mentioned earlier that you have uh, this branding and licensing uh, group that's focused, this team that's focused on the B2B. But mm -hmm. But that's not, you know, creating a group that's focused on that one area doesn't ensure that you have those innovative ideas or that creativity that continues to flow. So how do you work that into your culture? That's a good question. Um, one of the things that I uh, tend to do, so we use Slack as a primary form of internal communication. I know a lot of the associations are, are have gone to that kind of as well. And what I do as the executive director and CEO is I just monitor the conversations that are happening and seeing what's what's actually happening out there. Like, is there an idea here that sparks something? Um, mm -hmm. So the the other day uh, there was uh, what, what was it? My foundation uh, philanthropy director who handles all of our development. He came up with this his idea. He's like, "What about this?" And I went, 
I like what you're doing. I said, first off, you need to have a meeting with the various stakeholders on this, but vet this through. I said, give the whole idea. We all now have said this. Give me a one sheet. Tell me the purpose, the outline, the outcomes. Like, what are you thinking? Just give me the overview, but have this conversation. I said, because otherwise, um, no other conversation was happening. And since it was new and wasn't really fleshed out, I said, like, this is where good ideas can die, is if, if you just leave it here. I was like, I think this has some merit. Go run, work with it. Um, but that's that's kind of what I do is I watch for some of those as the, as the the leader of the organization watching for those things to happen seeing those those moments as they come up and saying hey what about this pursue this a little more what do you mean it, it, it really encourage them one on one but in that in that channel usually there's six or seven other staff so they see this dialogue that I'm engaging them with mm-hmm. and a lot of that starts there um, one I can't take credit for this one um, this would definitely be uh, from my predecessor, but one of the things our communications team did a couple of years ago is we have 130 special interest groups. One of them is on for fiction writers. And so what the communications team has done as one of our issues of our monthly magazine is working with them as a special interest group. They actually hold a contest every year. The members can submit their own fictional writings to the SIG. They get judged I love it. and then they pick and then they get published as our fiction issue every year. It started out as a one-time trial. We've now in our fourth year. Of course you are. Of course you are. People, and, oh my gosh. Like if you are a member, it does not, and that's that's the thing about engagement and communication, building a community. It is. It doesn't have to tie directly into the thing that your organization is doing it's supporting the membership itself. It's supporting these people and they want to support each other. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I love this so much, Trevor. Oh my gosh. So, so, you know, using that as an example, using kind of what we're working on that I just see my, within our culture, like we have the idea of innovation and that, you know, we need to be collaborative and we have our five pillars and and all that (laughs) stuff, but it's about modeling that, that behavior. And so I see as, it's my responsibility to do that. So I'm very, very cautious whenever someone's coming to me with an idea that my first reaction is that, no, we can't mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. My reaction is tell me more. Let me explain to me kind of what you're thinking. How, what is the impact? Like, how does this further our strategic objectives? Like, where is this going? You know, and as they kind of get through it, say, okay, let's, let's let this out. Sometimes it may be, we break it up and we do it in chunks. Sometimes it may be, we do the whole thing. Sometimes it's just, you know, it, it, we try it or it doesn't. Our, our foundation decided for the first time, and we've just really gotten in, getting into actually focused on donations, created a foundation lounge at our conference last year. First time ever. Mm-hmm. And um, we expected, oh, you know, a few people showed up. We just kind of put them in a small little meeting room. <laughs> and then the first day, they're like, we need a bigger room. I'm going, we have no more space this year, but we'll, we'll make it work. So we started adjusting hours. Um, but it was one of those, like, it was great. We raised the most uh, in development that year between that and one of our other events that night because of that lounge, because we raised wow. awareness of the and what they were doing. It was, but it was just so simple. And so and the thing is putting together a lounge, paying for, you know, we had a cocktail happy hour. So there wasn't free snacks and all that stuff throughout. It was just that specific time, but it made a world of difference. Yeah. And so it's just taking those ideas going, yeah, change this. Tell me more about it. Let, let's see where we go with this. Um, my marketing team, I basically say, as long as you don't get me in trouble um, or you don't make me question things, go for it. You know, let's see what you got. I said, I said some, of, some of our members are not going to appreciate some of the things we do. It's We're not going to make everybody happy. Um, but one of the things that they did, uh, we have a, you know, Typical member get a member campaign. Um, we call it our member voucher program or our MVP program. This year, the announcement went out, and the first line of it said, uh, "We drink and we know things." <laughs> Wait, did that get you in trouble? And <laughs> it didn't, but it sparked the most conversation between within our organization about those who knew about the show or had read the books, and those who didn't. And then, of those who didn't, how many found that? somewhat offensive or someone who thought, oh, that's kind of funny. It is me. Yeah. And, but it was an interesting conversation about 
the culture and the makeup of our membership and what that one sentence did. My, I had the conversation with my board this weekend about it and they, <laughs> they gave me the polarizing concepts, but overall they're like, it was interesting. It was eye catching. It was, it, it really got it going. Um, for those who, who have seen me on Facebook, I updated my, my uh, cover profile yesterday that has a zombie and it says, we need brains, you know, talk about, <laughs> about bringing membership in and I'm going, let's be creative. Let's, let's get that eye, uh, catch, catch your eyes. Um, you know, something that's just going to be out there and be fun with it. And so that, that's my whole thing. That is my role. And I think whether you're the CEO, or the executive director, or you're any other person staff, it, the way you really impact your culture is by continuing to foster and model those opportunities. You will have to say no at times. Like yeah. it, there are things that you just have to say no to. And I, I recognize that. And I do say no at a certain point. I'm like, yeah, this is great, but not right now. How about we look at it at X, Y, Z? Um, but I also always encourage them thinking about if it's a budgetary issue, let's think about the budgeting process that's coming up in a couple of months. How do we vet through this to get this into our list of budgeting once as we make that as we make that ask? Is it, it because that's that incredible. Way. I just I have to um, break in here. And Layla says, I loved that image talking about the <laughs> want your brains image. Um, but isn't that incredible to be thinking about somebody who responds to your idea and instead of automatically shutting it down is coming back and saying either, okay, more on that. There's something, there's something there that I like what you said earlier. This is where good ideas can die. Go and get more information, vet this, bring me back a, a one sheet, you know, and, and let's talk about it. Um, or if it's, if it's heading in the no territory, but it's maybe a not yet, maybe mm -hmm. it's, uh, this is something. And then you went immediately into how, how would it work with the budget in the future? And what I love is that that is obviously your default is set to trying to make it happen. Your, your default, right. your default is trying to make it happen or at least testing it, which I think mm -hmm. is. I think it's challenging for a lot of leaders to just get to that point, you know? So yes. um, that's definitely, it's refreshing to hear. And it, it sounds like it's encouraging to the team that you have around you too. Right. Well, it, it, another example of where we've taken one of those that we looked at it and we're like, this is a really a good idea, but maybe there's something was here is uh, it was brought to us of what if we went through and kind of gave a good housekeeping seal of approval on escape rooms around the country. See, that's so smart. That's so it smart. <laughs> it would. But what we started talking about was what goes into all of that in terms of what is the objective piece and how do you train people to actually vet these through and do all this stuff? And is there a market? And so we said, okay, there's a lot here. Maybe this isn't where we need to go right now, but what if we think about the people who are designing those? It's like our strength is we love puzzles. We love to solve and create puzzles. What if we think about looking at helping those who design those rooms and giving them tips, giving them uh, resources? And we're like, that's a little easier chunk to bite off now as we try to do the other thing. Yeah. And so it was one of those, like, it wasn't a no, it, it felt right, but there was just something, like there was something that was not right now. We found another opportunity. So now we're exploring how does that work? And we have a team of volunteers that are helping us come up with this and, and looking at it who, um, who are undefeated. Like they actually enter uh, escape room challenges and, and contests. What? And have won. Yes. I did yes. not it's even fair. know that existed. Didn't yes. Know that existed. Absolutely. I, you know, there's association for everything. I started Googling. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> who, who may I possibly know in this space to connect with? Oh my and, gosh. But it was just one of those, like, this makes a little more sense. Let's start here and build into that. Yeah. Layla says, do you, do you all have a partnership with Think Geek? Love that shop. I would feel so epic if I escaped from the Mensa escape room, right? Mm -hmm. I know. I know. Uh, we are actually working on a partnership with Think Geek. Uh, details to be coming, but it is in our uh, in our list, our, our wish list. Like That's one of our wish list partners we want to have. Um, we have this wish list. Like We want to be somehow on the shelves in target uh somewhere like we want to be able to walk in like we want the mensa name the brand to be in these places that make sense yeah but that are, that becomes almost 
synonymous in regular household names. Uh, that they they used to be that way, and as society has changed, it has taken a different shift. So we're looking to um, figure out how to bring that back in today's uh, society. So there have been a few things that you've said um, all, all along the way. Um, you have been throwing out, I don't know if you even know that you've been doing this or not, but you've been throwing out yourself questions that you're asking yourself along the way or questions that you're asking the team around you. And so the word that keeps coming up for me is curiosity, that clearly you're curious about whether something will work, whether it won't, or whether you actually know the people that you're responsible for or not, or what you can learn from um, the feedback that you get, even if it's negative. Um, the whole time you're like, you're asking these questions all along the way. And so um, do you find yourself as you're going through day to day, you know, asking yourself questions about how this relates to Mensa and the work that you're doing there? Are you, are you like, I don't know. Are you like stumbling over something and you're like, ha, huh, yes, we could partner with, with the, <laughs> yeah, we could partner with uh, the Roomba people and figure out how to trick those babies out. Um, you know, mm -hmm. like, are you constantly stumbling over ideas or is this, you know? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so one of them, um, you know, going back to, you know, looking at the shirt. Yes. Those glasses. Glasses are synonymous like with, geek, right? with geek, right? Yeah. Um, and we're like, why didn't we think of this? So first we actually created a partnership as a member benefit program for our members on discount on vision okay. insurance. And that, that that's within the last two months and it's just been picking up. But we're actually working with a an eyeglass company on designing a pair of Mensa glasses um, that people can actually purchase. Really? Like, like they purchase... Uh, Ray Ban or, or Coach or you know any of those at the Ooh. like at your local lens class or whatever, but what we in the conversations we've had with them is we don't want to just do this to do this like we want to do it if it makes sense and they said absolutely and where it went from was a, a glassware uh, just line to saying what if we focus on readers like actual you know those quick readers you can yeah. get at Walmart or Target or CVS or or what have you that um, can pick it up because. They have very few designs for men, and most women will also buy the men's designs. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at that as our four-way, our entrance into that market. We're just like, what about course. yeah? And what about where it filters out the the like yes. the uh, blue? What is it blue light that comes from all of the electronic devices mm -hmm. and stuff? Because I've been looking yeah. into that, and I don't even need to wear glasses, but I want to filter out all of that uh, light right. that's supposed to be so horrible for you. Yeah. So we just we we look at that, and you know, it's like. Okay, this makes sense. We're like, are we? The other question will be is, are we trying too hard to make this fit? Because if we are, we're going. It's not a, a good fit. Because if it doesn't feel natural, it, it's not worth our time. Yeah. And so we're just going through that, and that was the thing with the eyeglass. Like we were working through, and we're like, uh, at first we we're like, maybe this isn't going to work. And then they came back with like, here's some of our research. This is what we think will work. And we're like, yeah, this just makes sense. And so it's it's all of that, and we you know we have a, an idea board that we just. Uh, kind of throw things up. I actually keep a, a bigger running total of what's happening. And everyone's going to be like, what happened to this? Where did this idea come from? Um, and particularly if someone brings an idea to me or to even one of my directors, I'm going, that's great. You all probably don't need to be working on this. Let's shift it over here. Let's work on this. Let's shift around, you know, managing your your, your resources. But um, the, the thing is, is and what I'm trying to build, and I think this will continue over the next year, is that culture of, you know, it's okay to throw an idea out there. It's okay to see what happens. And um, I really, I, I really like that idea of, you know, it's okay to fail. And I, I'm trying to push that. Uh, we've been fortunate enough that we vet through them enough at a certain point that we haven't had a, a big failure. Um, but I'm like, it's okay if we do. It, it's, it's awesome if we do, because that means we're trying. I'd rather us try and fail than not try at all. Yeah. And want that that in the culture. So yeah, we're always looking at things. Uh I know a couple of years ago they they did a partnership with Smart Water because you know it was smart. smart. <laughs> you know, smart has the word in it. So you know, yeah. you know that think, think geek, it was one of those like this makes sense. Why aren't we looking at that? And yeah. um so it, it's just th there's things all over the place. And sometimes it just starts with a wish list. Uh we we talked about um on on the, the game show, you know, what if we had celebrities on it? I'm going, huh, 
you know, there's a lot of celebrities out there who say they're Minsons, but I, I know whether or not they are because of our database. And I went, can I just give you the list of celebrities I want tested? And, you know, that's, maybe that's the way to get them in. They're like, you know, we could do that. I was like, that's actually really cool. Yeah. I mean, can I'm you like, imagine? What, what? Yeah. Why ask them? Let me, let me tell you who I want. And then let's see if we can see, get them tested. Well, who would them. you, who would you guess? Can I put you on the spot and ask you that? Someone you want um, tested. Oh, <laughs> who, who, who are we talking about? well, so one we talked about was uh, Sharon Stone because she yeah, always says, she always says she's a Minson. But um, we don't have any. We, she's never submitted her information to us to say she qualified. She may have the no, score. No, that's the person I automatically think of because it was in like uh, it was like in every article I ever read about no, her. Uh, yep, uh, she. You know, she's not on there. Uh, we. Uh, who was it else we were talking about? Um, oh, like we want to talk. We want to ask Maya Bialik uh, from Big Bang, formerly yeah. Blossom. Um, because of her background, we pretty much, we think she, she would qualify. Yeah, I would, I would think so, but you never know. Actually, you never yeah. know. Like she would be cool to know. Um, oh, we, we had a long list of like 20 people, mm -hmm. you know, but, but you know, our, our biggest thing. Like, so the two who are the most famous for us is Gina Davis. Yeah. Jack, yeah. And then, uh, Nolan Gould from modern family. Oh, Hey, I didn't know that. Yes. Yes. Although I shouldn't be surprised. I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would think that like Joe Rogan would be interesting because he's he's so he's so smart mm -hmm. in so many different areas. And well, I, Neil Gaiman. I wanna, Neil Gaiman. Yeah, sure. I want I want to test uh, Adam Savage. Yeah. Uh, from Memphis. Yes. Uh, so he's actually going to be our gala speaker this year at our conference. So I want to I want to see what he could do. I really really want to get will wheaton to test has he not tested no and oh. he will tell you he told us this at our conference and it's on youtube so yeah. it's no big secret his son is a member and he's afraid that he won't qualify because yeah. of his um and then have to say that his son qualified and he didn't yes you know what okay and russ says peter dinklage oh that yes. would be such a good one yes. Um, I, so a true story, I'll go ahead and say this here. I was, I was in the gifted program when I was going through school, but I have never taken the test. And the reason why is because I, I have this sneaking suspicion that I wouldn't actually test into Mensa. So I'm afraid, I'm afraid to take it. No joke. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I know what the answer is, but, uh, but I, I had, you know, there are other people who were in the same class with me, um, you know, and uh, they they're in it, but not I haven't taken it. So but I probably won't. I will, I'll probably die not taking that test. You know, we'll talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my membership hat on. We'll talk offline sometime. <laughs> it sounds good. Oh, my gosh. So I've had such a blast talking with you. And, you know, when I um, when I start out these interviews, I always have like 10 questions that I, I know pretty much that I'm going to ask. And with you, I, I just, I, I didn't know exactly which area you're going to get. And there's been so much that's happened since between when I talked to you last and now that I, um, I just kind of wanted to see where our conversation took us. And I'm so glad I did because from thinking about testing different celebrities that you think should be like Mensons or could be Mensons or the ones who, who say that they are, and you're like, mm -mm, not on my roster um, right. to how you're looking at developing products to the culture within your workplace to the day to day. How do you decide? And, and what do you do with the nose? You know, how do you mm -hmm. make it so that you're not necessarily turning away good ideas that could help to continue to innovate all of these things, um, meant that I had a fantastic, got a lot of value from our conversation today. And I hope that everybody else did too. Uh, so what did you guys think? I want to check over here on Facebook live for those who are watching right now and, uh, here in the chat box. What'd you guys think? What was your favorite? Who, what did you get? What was your takeaway? I guess. Yes. And Layla's like, yes, clapping <laughs> applause. Um, absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Trevor, for being a part of the show today. Absolutely. Thank you. I had a blast. Oh my God. It was 
it was so amazing. It, you guys, if you love the chat, um, please come back. Please tell other people about it. Uh, we try to have one every week on Tuesdays at two, and we're going on almost 10 years of doing this chat Tuesdays at two. So it's pretty remarkable. <laughs> if you love the chat, consider becoming a Patreon patron for as little as a dollar a month. You can help support these interviews and weekly flash briefings, as well as other resources that we produce for the chat. And until next time, everyone, keep asking questions to learn every day. As Joseph Campbell once said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Hey, Trevor. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had a, honestly had a blast. It was what a lot of fun. All right. I'll talk to you. And we're swapping t-shirts later, right? You're going to send me one of That's yours. Right. I'll send you a chat. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.